<laughs> yeah, <laughs> I saw that. Not in here. I didn't do it. Ooh. <laughs> What's going on guys and welcome back. Big day today, we are firing up our Indy 9R project, which is sitting right behind me. So if you've been, guys have been following this series, you're gonna say, wait, you're wearing the same thing and that sled sitting in the same spot. Well, yes, because this is, uh, it's all happening and well, this is the second day of this build, but <clears throat> it is all happening kind of in one day. Well, all the big parts right now. So we are ready, we have fuel in it, we have Rick. Rick is the man behind the, uh, the mechanics and the computer, which, leads me to what we're about to talk about. So we have the engine from Polaris, we have the pipe from Polaris, we have the ECU from Polaris, but even when you put a new motor in a, in a sled, not just the 9R, any motor, you know, there is a few steps that you need to do, which Rick is gonna talk us through kind of right now. Yeah, so uh, anytime you do any kind of engine replacement, uh, even if it's, uh, you know, you have an 850, you're gonna put another 850 in it you're gonna need to, unfortunately for, for you guys, you're gonna have to bring it to a, de a servicing dealer. Um, you've gotta reset all the braking parameters. Uh, in reality, it's not a bad idea to repump, uh, reprime the oil pump. Uh, and it's not terrible to, to reprime the fuel pump as well, um, which that's all done all done by computer, um, which- In digital wrench. In digital wrench, which is basically that's, solely for a dealership mm -hmm. um so yeah we've gone through we've we've primed the oil pump fuel pump's been primed uh we reset the uh, oil pump flow offset number so mm -hmm. that's matching our new oil pump and we were able to re uh relearn exhaust valves too yeah we did the exhaust valve relearn um and you know now at this point we're basically ready to pull the cord um, yeah so and like i said at the end of last video we really haven't started this this will be the first fire up um we were able to do the exhaust valves without it running which rick says is a one in <laughs> one in a thousand shot very rare with an 850 or in this case uh, a 9r can you can you learn those valves without the aid of the vibration of the machine running right uh, so but aside from that we're going to get this thing outside and pull the cord because it is not electric start for the first time. The Motley, the Motley crew here. <clears throat> Moment of truth. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I saw that. Not in here. I didn't do it. Ooh. <laughs> So Rick hit it right on the head. Well, that clutch is going to come back off now. <laughs> but he guessed, he guessed it three pulls. So 
you guys probably saw that there is no mile an hour. So, <laughs> Rick, can you explain why we have no mile yeah, an hour right now? Uh, I mean, we kind of knew that was going to happen. Uh, basically, the CCU doesn't have any calibration in it to know the pulses as the rotor's going around. The, the speed sensor's there, it's just not... Picking it up. It's, it's the ECU doesn't know what to make of each pulse. Right. So, so that is so that's something that we're going to try and work on with <clears throat> Polaris and, and Bruce's contacts over there. Um, we threw a clutch kit or clutch setup in it. Well, Bruce threw one in together, and it's definitely springy. Yeah. So we're going to have to do some changes there, but it does run. Track spins. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just checking it over, make sure there's no leaks or anything like that, and we'll probably fire it up again at some point and run it some more. Back and doors were hooked up. No codes or anything popped up. The only issue that we're having is just that speed issue, which is why the check engine light was on. Everything else checks out. Everything else was good. Bruce is obviously already changing that, that primary clutch setup. But we got the okay from the doctor. Minus, minus that one. It's the only issue. It's the only one. So, and Rick kind of had a feeling that that was going to be an issue going into this. So, again, we're going to have to work with the wizards over there at Polaris and get that figured out. But we're going to put another clutch set up in it, bring it back outside, and put a couple more heat cycles in it. How's it feel? Seems good. Does seem quick. Response does yeah. seem, definitely seem quick. <clears throat> the engagement might have to go down a little bit more. I just, yeah. I just thought with those heavy weights, it would have the engagement would have been lower. Yeah. On its own, but like it is on a P22, but it's not. This is acting more like you know if I was putting weight to anything else. Yeah. Or spring to anything else. Well, there you have it. We did some more clutching changes and we got it kind of where we feel that it should be. 
you know, on the stand. Obviously, that's not field testing, but we think this is a good starting point from where we are. So, um, kind of overview of what we did. We took a 2023 XER 136 with a 1.6 Cobra. It was an 850. It was electric start with a 7S. And we took the 850 out. We put a 9R in all the 9R components. We took the electric start out. We put a P85 clutch in. Uh, we didn't stick with the P22. We changed gearing. We changed clutching. We Bruce went through and sh and valved every shock in here to what we think is the best of the best that you could possibly get. It has 100 pound springs up front, heavy duties in the rear, which come factory but the valving inside of it is very, very good. Bruce pulled the limiter strap um, to cross country spec. So it is definitely much tighter than your, your, your ordinary XCR. Um, I noticed it as soon as I was walking up, I was like, did you pull that strap? And he's like, yeah, why? And I said, well, I could tell. So we're trying to make this the ultimate trail monster right here. Um, we will be testing it. We're gonna get it on snow and see what it does um, wherever we can find snow, whenever that may be. But uh, sled's done, it's ready. It's ready to go out and play and see what it could do and see what it does to an 850 and see what it does to a boost sled. So they're definitely gonna be two different animals, for sure two different animals, but they're gonna be, they're gonna be pretty wild. And I know a lot of guys are gonna ask, you know, what did this build cost? What did this build cost? And I'm gonna try to get a breakdown of everything uh, and put it at the end of this video. But uh, it's tough because a lot of parts aren't even available right now. And uh, it's not a cheap build, guys. You know, this is not something that you're gonna be like, oh, you know, I'll spend, you know, two grand and I'll swap over to a 9R. Like, no, it's, it's a decent chunk of change. So. I'm going to do some real research and some real digging and see kind of what what a legitimate idea of cost would be um, for you guys. But again, it's not going to be cheap. So excited for this. Big shout out to Southside Sales and Service. Uh, Bruce, owner of Southside Sales and Service. Uh, this really all wouldn't happen without you. Big shout out to Rick, um, gold mechanic here at Southside Sales. Uh, what an awesome guy he was to work with with this project. Um, I love talking to Rick because he's just so knowledgeable about a bunch of stuff. He sees stuff coming in and out of here all the time. That's like, wow, that's pretty wild. So um, big shout out to him. I originally was gonna do this all by myself and then he ended up being a little bit slower. So he jumped on board and, and really gave me a hand. And it was nice that he could do the work and I could hold the, <laughs> the camera too. But when we were off camera, I did work. I promise you guys I did, but um, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully we get this thing on snow soon, sooner than later, and uh, I'll keep you guys posted on how it is. But that's going to do it. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.